every miracle that you have given us, oh God, the breath of life, family, friends, Lord God. Father, to these things we can't even put a price, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you remain God all by yourself. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you have shown us to love, Lord God. For whilst we were yet sinners, you still died on the cross. We don't need a reason to love you, but to just love you for who you are. Thank you, our Savior. Thank you for every good thing that you are doing in our lives. These good things that bring smiles on our faces and cause us to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for these things, O oh Lord. Oh Lord, we give you glory and we honor you, Lord. We exalt you in this morning, mighty Father. Knowing fully well that, Lord, our hearts are expectant of your presence, Holy Spirit. Make us receptive to your word, mighty God to your blessing in the name of Jesus that Lord God we will move and creation will see that we are indeed the true sons of God Father thank you for you never fail thank you that your word will never return to you void but accomplish everything it has been sent for so thank you oh Lord Lord God we pray that Lord may you saturate this place this morning mighty God from the crowns of our heads to the souls of our feet, mighty Father. Let your virtue flow in each and every one of us, even through our children, mighty God. Father, let your virtue flow in the name of Jesus. We give you full prohibitance in this place, oh God. Father, let your ministering angels, mighty God, join us as we worship. Worship your name, mighty Father, because, Lord God, there is nothing greater than to worship you, oh God. Father, we decrease that you increase, O oh Lord. Father, we say be magnified in this place, O oh Lord. Above all our thoughts and imagination, Lord God, show yourself strong, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we may understand your will in our lives, Lord God. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are doing a new work in this morning. You are doing a new work in this morning. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor in the name of Jesus.
was and is to come. Jesus, Jesus, it's in you alone, our lives are in your hands, Jesus, you are a miracle working.
sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will see. Your presence, your presence, your presence. 
oh lord this morning that's only one thing we desire your presence hallelujah thank you lord for releasing your presence upon your people this morning from monday oh god we as a family we have been praying and fasting as your church oh god I need you today you have been increasing the level of your presence upon your people oh god this morning oh god we want to say thank you for that where your presence we have everything oh god thank you lord for your healing presence thank you lord for your miracle working presence thank you lord for your restoring presence Hallelujah. Thank you Lord for your delivering presence. Hallelujah. So this morning we receive oh Jesus. Father we commit then the house of prayer family in the hand of Jesus. As the seven days as a house of prayer family we have set apart to pray and seek your face through fasting. Having a deeper level of communion and fellowship and intimacy with you Jesus. We pray oh God today Lord may you visit your people oh God up body up in their areas of need so oh God any of our congregation need a healing touch spiritual physical emotional relational social you have released your healing touch oh God any of our congregation needed a financial restoration oh god during the seven days of prayer and fasting you have released oh god any of our people have been going through lot lot of challenges and crisis or oh, anybody who is under the heavy highest level of stress or depression or whatever it is today the presence of jesus release a healing upon them oh god there are people may be in our among us our family who have been struggling business job, of education career wise father this morning we release this seven days of answer the maga some of them may be looking for their life partners oga this seven days you have answered oga some of their marriage have been on rock this week oga you have healed some of them may be struggling with the sin or various habits tonight we pray oh god you have set them free i do lord as we sit at your feet today speak oga we commit our nation commit the president ministers every citizen of this blessed nation oh god we pray you will bless our nation and bless the leaders of this nation bless every citizen of this nation oh god we also remember various nations that are represented in our prayer our cry and our prayer you shall bless the nation so oh god we also pray where there is no freedom to worship you in truth and spirit may you release you are open door the heart of a king is like a water course over release the way you want at the direction of god i pray every religious political leaders against the kingdom expansion we pray you shall touch oh god even we pray for peace and prosperity of jerusalem oh god bless your people father this morning as we sit we come into the rest of the service including the holy communion in the hand of jesus lord bless us oh god bless all of us in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and amen please take your seat praise the lord and good morning church Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. And that is his hallelujah. If you truly believe, can we put our hands together just appreciate our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. As we appreciate our God. Can we look at your neighbor give our neighbor a genuine smile and tell them my neighbor I am blessed to see you this beautiful Sunday morning in the sanctuary hallelujah amen and amen and amen may god bless you look at your neighbor closely and tell my neighbor past 7 days of fasting you have increased 7 kg hallelujah that's a god's miracle amen You all look awesome you all look well glorious it is all because of the love of God 
the time we have spent before the presence of God is not in vain. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Let me take this wonderful opportunity to welcome you all uh, to the house of prayer today on the fourth Sunday and also the final day of our congregational prayer and fasting. May the Lord bless you. The, I'm, I want to assure you whatever prayers you have been praying, the heaven has recorded it. Hallelujah. It is not for man. It is not for anyone. May God bless you. Amen. So let me take this opportunity to once again welcome you all. If this is your first time to attend the Sunday service in House of Prayer. Would you please stand? We would like to acknowledge and appreciate anyone here for the first time. This is your first time to attend the Sunday service. Anyone? We have a sister here. Please remain standing, sister, until you receive a welcome God. Amen and amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. We highly appreciate uh, our visitors. You may be seated. We always say, if you are just visiting with us, take our warm and wonderful Christian greetings to your own family and the church. May the Lord bless you. Looking forward to fellowship with you. Enjoy the presence of Jesus. Maybe you are new to Indola. Maybe you are moved to Indola past few weeks and months. You have been searching for a family church as a part of the search this Sunday morning. You are in house of prayer. As a house of prayer family, we have a good news. The good news is your search has come to an end. We are Bible-believing Pentecostal church. As you worship with us, we will let you know why we are here so we can serve the Lord together. Amen. As you receive a welcome card, please kindly open and fill your details. After filling, please tear it out. The portion you fill, the preparation, hand it over to the ushers. The rest you can carry. We'll be in touch with you. May the Lord bless you. I'm also blessed to see our parents of our sister Belvin and welcome dad, welcome mom. We are happy. Welcome anyone who's been away and you are back. May God bless you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's quickly look at uh, our bulletin, the last page of the bulletin. All our weekly activities continues. I am go. I am reading very fast so that we can give uh, enough time to the man of God because we have the Holy Communion too. Uh, all our worship service, intercession, Sunday school, Saturday prayer meeting, intercession we have a Saturday 8 to 9, Sunday 7.30 to uh, 8.30. Please, if you have that grace, uh, please don't miss. As I reminded Last time, it is not time encouraging every Saturday, every Sunday, all of you come. But we can make a decision at least one Saturday in a month. One Sunday in a month, that makes a very big difference. This is a different spiritual air battles. We need people to pray and to intercede. May the Lord bless you. And Miracle Night Service every Wednesday at uh, 18.15. So this Wednesday, I know this Wednesday is a public holiday, but still we have a Miracle Night Service. Looking forward to see you. Discipleship class, if you are below 120 and above 15 or seven, eight, uh, after you finish the youth, the 20, please... If after 25, because we have a youth here, and you are in that stage, you have not gone through the discipleship class. We have a powerful team here every Sunday, 8 o'clock. Please don't miss. Please join then the youth meeting and the ladies' meeting as it is here. Put it here. Then uh, we will have a fifth or first Sunday of June. We will have a mission promotion Sunday that is from the POG head office. The team will be coming to mobilize the POG mission strategies. May God bless you. Today, since we are breaking the fast and the pastor is here, we wanted to bless all the children and everyone. Today, Sunday school teachers, please, we will excuse the children. will remain here only for today. We will pick it up on next uh, Sunday because I want the children also to be blessed. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Anyone's birthday falls this week, would you please stand? We would like to pray for you. Anyone's birthday? Amen, sister. We have a doctor. We have a brother. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Uh, those who are married and your wedding anniversary falls this week, would you please stand? We would like to pray for you, those who are married. Let's pray for our beloved ones. Father, we thank you for your wonderful people whom we have blessed. These are moms, brothers, and sisters. 
a great asset in the kingdom of God, specifically to the house of prayer family. Lord, this morning, as we rejoice with them, because your word says rejoice with those who rejoice, you have added, adding one more blessed year into this blessed people's life, oh Jesus, oh God. So we pray God's protection, we pray God's covering as they stand firm in Christ for the supernatural victory that is guaranteed in the name of Jesus, oh God. May their going, may their coming, their works of their hands, their generation, their health, wealth be blessed for the glory of Jesus. We also prophesy many, many wonderful and blessed years ahead of the Moga. Bless Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen and amen. Let's put our hands together and appreciate the God for these people. Hallelujah. Thank you, church, for standing with us for seven days in various levels you have been praying and fasting and I know all of you have been praying and fasting as the Holy Spirit has directed you according to the spiritual physical strength and the revelation God has given to you and I wanted to assure you the Lord will reward us the Lord will reward us hallelujah and uh, just in the our family if you as a parents, children, siblings, if you spend a few hours together, that builds a family strong and you could see the joy and the closeness in the family. If that is true, past seven days, you decided to set apart time with God. How much the heaven values. May that value be added into your life. Amen. Every evening we have been blessed. Those who have been here, those who have been connected through the social media, I'm sure you have been blessed. One thing I wanted to assure you, the man of God has been preaching and uh, it is not they just wanted to please, to, uh, please us. No. One thing it is guaranteed, house of prayers, we have stepped into a season of blessing. And that is you and I. So don't miss Tap that blessing. Let the Kanini, let the Indola, let the Zambia, let the world know there is a God who has decided to bless this sanctuary. May God bless you. Reverend Ivan Smashonga has been ministering from Thursday, Friday, last night. Today he's winding up. He's, uh, I'm sure, he's not new to us. He's preached here. He's a senior pastor at Indola Worship Center, Pentecostal Assemblies of God here. And a mighty man of God. We have connected the past few years. And a great blessing to us, pastor. Great blessing to us. Thank you for the ministry. Let's put our hands together. Welcome the man of God to minister the word of God. Up to the word of God, we will have the Holy Communion. May God bless us. Greetings to all of us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I believe all of us are happy to be here. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful to the Lord once again for according me this opportunity to stand before you, the great men and women of God. Hallelujah. I'm also so thankful to the reverend and the wife, the elders and the entire leadership of the church for according me this opportunity. You know, God can open a door for you, but if the man in charge of the work has not opened up the door, you may not find yourself at such places. Hallelujah. Man of God, I'm so glad. I'm so grateful. Hallelujah. You can trust this pulpit to me just by faith. Hallelujah. I know some of you are meeting for the first time, but I'm not a stranger here. I know some of you by face. Some of you I know by name. Hallelujah. I know the pastor by name. I know me, Mrs. Lawrence by name. I know Pastor Peter here. I know Mom Zabes there by name. There are, some of you think I don't know you. Hallelujah. We are so grateful. My uncle there from my home village, Chinsari. Hallelujah. That's where I come from. I'm so grateful. And we, 
this morning. I just want to speak what I feel the Lord placed upon my heart for this particular season. We are going to read a scripture from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, and I'll read from verse 13 to verse 18. And what I am talking about this morning is when you stand still. When you stand still. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 18. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand still. Some versions are saying, Stand firm. Hallelujah. Stand still or stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which you will work, which you will work for you. Today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. That the people of Israel or the people of house of prayer may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after after them and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts his chariots and his horsemen and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord who when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh his chariots and his Men. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word this morning. Your word comes to instruct. Your word comes to correct. Your word comes to restore. There are people in our audience this morning who have come to seek for restoration. We pray that God, your hand is not short to bring forth that restoration. There are people who have come seeking for healing. Your hand is not too short, Father, to bring forth healing right now as we speak your word. Let your word be active in their lives and begin to cause, Lord, that part of the body that is under pain and affliction to receive the touch and the healing hand of God. I pray, King of glory, that you are going to speak to each and every one of us. For your Father, Lord, according to your word, the preaching of your word must be accompanied with his signs and wonders, with the workings of miracles. I pray, King of kings, in the name that is above every other name, mighty Jehovah, God of all creation, mighty man of war, great in battle, the way maker, the yoke breaker, the sustainer and the giver of life. Father, we come and approach your throne of mercy. We must Lord, submit to you that, Father, do that which only you can do, that which no man can do. We pray in the name of Jesus. There are things we can do ourselves. But God there are, Master Lord, there are things that we cannot do on our own. That's the more reason we come and approach your throne of mercy. I pray in the name of Jesus that as I stand oh Lord before your people this morning Father use me as a tool 
to as a vessel of healing, restoration, deliverance, and provision. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And Master Lord, as we are still in the period of prayer and fasting, mighty God, I pray that King of glory, we cannot pray, oh God, in vain. We cannot fast in vain. I pray that King of kings, uh, as you speak a word, uh, that the prophetic word, uh, that master word uh, of manifestation, uh, Father, bring forth healing. It is almighty God, each and every one of us, uh, from bondages, oh Lord, that have held us, master stuck uh, on one position. We pray, King of glory, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you the adoration. Lord, where there is darkness, let your light begin to shine. Where there is confusion, let there be, Master Lord, peace and calmness. Where there is trouble, Father, we pray that God, you move in and begin to work things, oh God, behind our master and lead our back. We pray that King of Kings, yes, Lord, we look up to you, Father, according to your word. Yes, Isaiah 64, that God, you may tear the heavens open and come down, Lord, and let the mountains be shaken. As your people have come this morning, many have come with different mountains, mountains of lack, mountains of pain, mountains of confusion. We pray that God, as you tear the heavens open in this service, oh God, and as we speak of father we must do it of father yes so father before the open heavens uh, mighty king of a glory like father the master the fire makes the waters to boil let your presence make uh, every situation to boil in your presence i pray in the mighty name uh, of jesus the son of the living god uh, mighty Jehovah god uh, we bless your name and we give you glory receive the adoration of father we are here for you we are not here to impress anybody. We are not here to show to anybody what we are able to do. We are here because of you. We are here to seek you. We are here, Father Lord, in your presence, in the name that is above every other name. And according to your word, the steps of a righteous man, the steps of a righteous woman are ordered by the Lord. It is our prayer, it is our desire that to order our steps, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, this morning I step aside that to take charge and speak to your people and touch your people and heal your people as we speak your word. Father Lord, you speak specific things in the lives of your people. I pray in Jesus' mighty, precious name. Amen. A big hand for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to say this. As I minister, if you feel this is my time, this is my word, don't hold back. Don't hold back. When God comes in a place, he comes to meet his specific needs. And if these specific needs can be met at a different time. So when you feel this is my time, I am already calling for an outer call. You come to the front, I will pray for you, and then we will continue ministry. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 14 and 13 to 18. The story that we have read is at a stage and at a time when finally the crooked man Pharaoh lets go of the children of Israel. After a long struggle. Hallelujah. So the man Pharaoh releases the children of the nation of Israel and he says, I do not want to see them in my land anymore. Hallelujah. So the man, the moment he releases them, Moses gathers the people of God to march into the promised land. And now here, we are at a stage when they are let go, God tells them to use a route that is through the wilderness. And God knew there was a shortcut and there was a route 
that was the easiest route to get into the promised land. But God does not lead them through the shortest and the easiest route. He makes them to go through the wilderness. So where we are, they come to a place, they are about to cross the sea. And when they come to this place, there was no way out for them. And the enemy had already prepared himself to pursue after the children of God. And they are, they are in between the Red Sea and the enemy coming. This enemy was ready to kill. Hallelujah. Just like them, many times when God begins to lead you, he does not lead you according to the way you thought he's going to lead you. Sometimes he leads you in a way and in a path that you begin to question, why did God lead me this way and not the other way? These people, where they are, they see the enemy with the chariots ready, prepared and dressed to kill. Even the king himself was dressed to kill. The people, they begin to complain and say, Moses, you should have let us die in the foreign land. At least, you shouldn't have brought us here to die in the wilderness. There are times when things are hard, things are tough in our lives. We begin to question and complain to God. God knows what he's doing. That's the more reason when things are tough, you must know where to go. You must know where to rush to. So when the people are complaining, they know this is our time to die. They are going to bury us without coffins. Hallelujah. Then Moses receives a word from God. And God says, tell my people not to be afraid. I am here to tell you, don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Even if the situation is life-threatening, child of God, as long as God, the one that delivered you from the land of Egypt, from the land of poverty, from the land of confusion, and he has led you in a particular route, he knows where he's taking you. Don't complain. God says, tell them not to be afraid. So the enemy thinks, I have pushed them in a corner. They have nowhere to go. They have no way out. I am going to kill all of them. The enemy has brought you to a place where you think now I'm going to die. He brings you in a corner, separates you from the rest, and pushes you in a corner. And where you are, you've tried to do what you can. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have consulted everything a human being can do. You have done. And now you begin to think, I'm going to die. I am here to tell you, God knows what he's doing. God, the Lord, the God that delivered you, that brought you here, he knows what he's doing. And he knows that you are going to get into the promised land. He did not deliver you to bring you to a place where you die in the wilderness. He did not deliver you to bring you to a place where you begin to complain because of what you are passing through. He did not deliver you. He did not heal you so that you can be able to continue in your suffering. God knows when he delivers you and he says in his word, I am going to take you to the land that I have promised. God knows how, what obstacles you face, what the situations you meet in life. I want you to know and understand that you God, the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, he knows what he's going is doing and what you know, method he's going to use. At this point, the people began to say, Abba, if I was in Iruapula, I was going to get into a boat to cross. 
This was a mighty, impassable sea. People face impassable or situations that are too hard. Hallelujah. So the people thought, now God has made a mistake. The enemy thought, God has made a mistake. If there's a mistake God has made, is to deliver them from my land. And he has pushed them in a corner where, where you are. It is a place that looks like you're not coming out. It is a place that looks like nothing is going to happen. It is a place that looks like the career that you have entered, it will not take you anywhere. I want you to know that God knows why he has brought you to such a place. God knows why he has brought you to where you are. God knows what he must do in order for you to reach where he has promised you. He's not like a man that will speak and fail to do what he has spoken. When God speaks over your life, when God speaks over your family, when God speaks over your career. It is a done deal. You cannot negotiate with what God has spoken. There are people who think you will not go anywhere. There are people who think that because of what you are passing through, you are going to die in that situation. I am here to tell you it is not over until Yahweh, until God, the one that created you, says it is over. The doctors can say, yes, we are just waiting for time. I want to tell you, it is not yet over. You can be there on the sick bed and you think you're going to die on the sick bed but as long as God has not says it is over it will not be over why God knows where he's taking you in the mighty name of Jesus stop complaining cease complaining he says don't be afraid I know what I'm doing stop complaining don't be afraid. I will make a way for you. In the impossible situations, that's where you need God. Man of God, God in Bemba, we call him Shimuitwa Pakakala. Where things are tough, I have no answer, I have no solution. At that point, I must look up to God. They needed to look up to God. That's why they did whatever they could. They were men who were strong, who thought I am going to fight. They were men who thought I have speed, I am going to run. But there was no way to run. There are, thought who, there are people who thought I know how to swim. I'm going to get into the sea and swim. You may die in the sea. Do not do what you, you, you think you should do. You must wait upon the Lord. That's why we are told, be still, stand firm, and see my salvation. Hallelujah. You must stand still. When people lose hope, Moses sees hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When people don't seem to see a solution, a way out, Moses, God opens his eyes and Moses begins to see a way in the midst of the sea. In the book of Psalms 66, this is what we come to discover, beginning from verse 5, that now after God parted the waters, and then they begin to call the friends. Oh, come and see what the Lord has done. This God that has brought you to a place where you think now, this is my dead end. He must do something in your life. When he does something, even before you cross over, I want you to know and understand and take note of a few things that I want to give you this morning. When you stand still, number one thing, you are going to cross over. When you come to a place where you stand still in your life, wait upon God, no matter what you may be facing, no matter what the situation you are facing in your life, when you stand still in the presence of God, to stand still is to seize all human activity, all human efforts, every effort you have pushed in, you have tried, you have been to school, you have done what you can, you have applied whatever lotion you can apply, but nothing seems to happen. The Lord is saying to you, be still.
still and know that I am God. When you stand still, the Lord, the God that brought you is going to make a way for you. You are going to cross over no matter how possible your situation looks like. When you stand still, child of God, believe you me, you are going to cross over. When God told Moses, stretch your, 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 your road and the Lord made a way for him, for, 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 for them. Child of God, this God we are talking about is the God of impossibilities. Is the God that made the waters. Is the God that made the seas. Is the God that made the winds. He can command the winds to stop. He can command the waters to stop. Where we are, God commands the waters to stop. I know what if you read properly, you come to discover that the waters began to go no up you. I have never seen a river that flows up here, but with the power of God, it can cause waters to flow up here for the sake of your life in order for you to cross over when you stand still, child of God. I want you to know and understand that your God that answers prayer is going to answer you. He will make a way for you in the midst of the of trouble. He will create a way for you where there are seems to be no way. He says, I am the Lord that rest thee. It is him that has brought you to the level where you are. He cannot start something before it begins. He finishes. When God begins something in your life, he has already finished. That's why Jeremiah says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I, se I separated you. I consecrated you. Child of God, I want you to know, when God comes to Moses and tells Moses, let the Father let my people go, God has already finished. God has already no made a way. Even where there seems to be no way. He is the God of the impossibilities. If you want to see impossible miracles, impossible victories in your life. You must come to a place where you say my effort has been failing me. Enough is enough. I am standing still to see the salvation of God. When you stand still, child of God, you cross over and you cross over into the promised land in the mighty name of Jesus. There are some of us who think we have heard it so much. We have been hearing this time and time, but nothing seems to be happening in my life. I want you to know there's something God is doing that when you stand to testify, people will see the hand of God over your life, over your family, over your career, over your destiny. Child of God, you come to a place where all your efforts cannot solve out anything. At that point, you must let it to God. He is a special in creating ways where there seems to be no way. When God you know, comes through in your life and as you stand still, this God who is a specialist begins to work on your life, begins to command the waters to stop, to stop. And this is what they see that he told them, what are they waiting for? This is now time to move. Tell my people to move. And they started moving. They walked through the sea by foot. I am here to tell you you are crossing over. You are moving to the place What that God intended for your life. You are moving to a place that God prepared for you. You are moving to a place where that God know intended for your life even before. Yes, you began to move. God knows that you are going to get there. God knows that you cross over. God knows that you are going to walk over obstacles in your life. Obstacles are not there to hinder you, to stop you. They are there in order for you to step them, to, to, to step over them. Child of God, I am saying you are crossing over. Is it your career? You've been trying. You've been writing. You've been pursuing. Nothing seems to, to come your way. I am here to tell you, you are crossing over. You are stepping over your obstacles. You are crossing over you are stepping over your situations as you stand firm.
firm in Christ Jesus. As you stand firm, he is sending all victories. The word of God tells me in the book of Matthew 6, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all the preachers shall be added unto you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that the Lord begin to create a preach for you in order for you to get to your destination. In the name of Jesus, there is no power, there is no sorcery, there is no witchcraft, there is no satanism, there is no Goliath that can stand against your movement to the promised land. When you stand still, you will see the hand of God working in your life. When you stand still, you see the favor of God in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. You will not stand at the same position. Where have you been? When you stand still, you begin to see the hand of God. You are crossing over. You are moving to the next destination, no matter how slow. But I want you to know, slow but sure, you are crossing over. And others, as they have stepped out, they are seeing what will happen when God lets go the waters. There was a pillar of water that was standing. He will not release it. He will not let go until you cross over. When you stand still, you see the salvation of God. You cross over. You've tried. Nothing seems to happen. I want to tell you. You cross over. You are crossing over. Hey, house of prayer, hear the word of the Lord. You are crossing over. Every party is standing against you. It will not continue standing against you. It is not you fighting the battle. It is God, the God that has caught you. Is the one that will make a way for you. You don't know your tomorrow. He knows your tomorrow. He knows your tomorrow. He knows the, begin, the end from the beginning. I'm saying he knows the end from the beginning. Before God pushes you in a path, he, has, he first walks the path and comes back and says, my son, my daughter, you are starting from here. And he knows that there are battles along the way. He has not opened your eyes. Some of you, if God was to open your eyes to see your entire next week, you may decide not to go through the entire week because of certain barriers that you are seeing in the week. I am here to tell you, no matter what it is, it shall not stand against your life. I am saying, shall not stand against your life. It will not hinder you. Delay is not denial. Sometimes you are delayed. Sometimes the things don't seem to be happening. I want you to know, you shall not stick on one position. You must come to a place where you take the position of God. And when take the position of God, understand the still begin to see when there is too much light and you have problems with eyes usually they first put a, something to cover here so that you can see this is what i want you to see this is the position I want you to take. As you are praying, you have taken this posture. You have taken this position. And I want you to see. The reason why people do that, they want to see where they are going. Or what is coming. I want you to sit and, and do this. And begin to see what God has prepared for you. You may not see it with the physical eyes. But there is something happening in the spirit. Child of God. Yes, he tells him, take a position. And I'm going to show you that I am God. You are going to cross over. Fortunately, even the king of Egypt took a position. He didn't go after them. He stood on the side. When God made way for the children of Israel, they began to walk over the sea. They crossed over. Before everyone was out, the enemy also pursued them. He also entered the way that God had created for them. I want to tell you, the way God has made for you, your enemy shall not use it. 
I am saying the way God has made for you, your enemy shall not use it. The job God has given you, the enemy shall not use it. The marriage God has given you, the enemy shall not use it. You cannot move in a path God has made for you. And your enemies come and use the same platform. No, 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 no. God forbid. By this brand fasting, I pray that every devil trying to follow you in the way God has made for you, may that the devil be swallowed up when you stand still. Number two. When you stand still, God fights for you. When you stand still, God fights for you. Some of you don't even know that you have been fighting. Life is a struggle. Life is a fight. Even if somebody wants to get married, you need to fight. You just can't go once and propose and she says no. And you say that is it. You must fight. You must not give up. You must not let go. Hallelujah. We, I want you to know and understand that life is a battle. Business is a battle. Whatever you do in life, it is a battle. Education, it is a battle. It is a battle with the books. But I want you to know that your God, when you stand still, he will fight for you. He will come through for you. He will make a way for you. And you are going to cross over. The word of God, the steps of a righteous man, a righteous woman, shall be ordered by the Lord. And as you cross over and get on the other side, God says, wait, I am not yet done. You have crossed over. But now turn and look where your enemies are coming from from. And if God says the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. The poverty you see today, you shall see no more. The sickness you see today, you shall see no more. This is what I'm talking about. When you stand still as a child of God, as a believer, as a woman of substance, women, I want you to know, I want you to understand Stand. You are not just a woman. You are not just a nobody. You are a woman that has substance. There is something that is in you that why God cannot allow your enemy to take your life. He cannot allow sickness to kill you before your time. God says, Look now and watch how I am going to deal with my enemies when you stand still. The battles you are supposed to fight you will not fight anymore it is God that come to fight a battle on your behalf well you are just watching you are just watching if you have a cape you even put a cape to shed yes, so that you can be able to see clearly how God is dealing with your enemies they are people they are powers that have risen against you there is nothing successful you do in your life in your family everyone fails to get married relationships start but they never come to anything I want you to know there is a God that's fighting battle that's why he says you will not fight in this battle all I want is to you to be watching as you stand still I want you to watch how I'm dealing with my enemies ah child of God I want you to know this God will fight your battle You've been fighting your own fights. You've been fighting your own battles. And the victories have been small victories. The theme is standing firm in Christ Jesus. For supernatural victories, there can never be supernatural victories in career, in business, in marriage, in life, in ministry. There must be a supernatural call that must fight Yes, supernatural powers that are fighting against you. I'm here to tell you, you've been fighting battles ever since you were born. The Lord is saying, enough is enough. You fight no longer in this battle. I, the Lord, that 
delivered you from the land of Egypt that delivered you from poverty I am saying you are coming out and when God is finished with dealing with your enemies there will be no more he says see them for the last time see them for the last time these are the taskmasters that held you captive these are the people that kept you in poverty I want you to see them for the last time because I the Lord I am stepping into the ring when God steps into the ring you must step out and God begins to fight he has never fought a battle he has never fought a fight and come out a loser ah no 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 this is not the God that I know the God that answers by fire he will fight the battle for you he will create fire where there is no fire he will create a miracle where there is no miracle he will create a kitten where there is no kitten he will create a liver where there is no liver he will create a way for you he will replenish the blood it is him that made the blood he will fight this battle is it the battle of health he will fight it for you is it the battle of marriage he will fight it for you is the battle of career he will fight for you yes child of God God says I'm stepping in when God steps in you are standing still to watch how your enemies are being dealt with I'll confirm with you my sister stand up she's one of the people God showed me I must pray for you have fought so many battles I know all of you fight battles but I know she has fought battles sometimes she begins to think when is God ever going to come through for me this is your word from the Lord those battles are not there to stop you. There is no power that will stop you. There is no witchcraft, sorcery against you. Whatever your name is, there is no sorcery that will work against you. I pray for you in Jesus' name. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. And I command barriers be broken. Chains be broken. Every cage made against you to hinder you, to stop you, to limit you. Cages of limitation be broken, 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 be broken. In the name of Jesus. Child of God, listen. There is somebody that got a law, a rope, and tied something and took it to the bush to go and tie it on a tree. And they say, the way, the longer the rope, that is how far you can go. That is how far you can go. When that witch went into the bush, the Holy Ghost was following. No human being has ever seen where that witch went. But God was there. The God that was following is going to break that chain. He's going to break that rope. He is going to fight the battle. That battle you have been fighting. You have been fighting. There is nothing that you have not done. Everything you have done. What business? Every business that you hear is trending on the market. You've been there. Moms and best come, I pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. He will fight the battle. I'm saying he will fight the battle. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let chains begin to break. Let chains begin to break. 
as we do the conclusion of this prayer and fasting, let this be the conclusion of the issues of our life. The barriers that have been standing against us. Let them be broken in the name of Jesus. Whatever Lord she puts her hands to, let it begin to flourish. Let it begin to expand. Let it begin to increase. There is a special grace the Lord did this thing upon you. And not only upon you, even upon many in the audience. There are things that were limiting you. The mistakes are breaking. When you stand still, God begins to break the limitation. You win battle without fighting. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Bless your servant. Bless her. Bless her. Bless her, Lord. In the name of Jesus. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Whatever our Lord has been limiting her, limiting our family, today we pray. We pray, Lord, the siege be broken. The siege be broken. In the name of Jesus. When you stand still, God fights the battle for you. When you stand still, it will no longer be you to fight the battle. It is God. He is the one that will fight your battle. He says, I am the Lord. I want to show the Egyptians that I am God, that I am overcomer. When I come in the ring, he does not come in the ring to prove anything. He comes to show the devil that I am God. When he comes in your life, he comes to show the devil that he cannot be compared with anybody. There's that song you sang, Mr. Zimba. Equal to none. There is that song that we are singing at the end it was saying he is equal to none. No one is equal to him. Something like that. I want to tell you you've been fighting on your own. Your own. Yes, you've been fighting with education. But I want you to know let God step in. He makes the impossible to become possible. He makes a way where there is no way. He makes room where there is no room. He makes things, he brings food where there is no food. When they crossed over, then God began to deal with the enemies. I want to tell you, when you marry, the Egyptians you see, you shall see them no more. When you get employed, there are people that were laughing at you. You shall see them no more. They will not be around your sphere. They will not be around you. Because God will make them to move very far from you. Father was watching. When God was dealing with his own people. The Bible says, Then God released the waters. And everyone that was in the midst to the sea was swept by the waters. Take it! Things you thought are going to kill you. The Lord is taking them away. You shall see them no more. I'm saying you shall see them no more. Do not cry. Do not be afraid. When God comes, you know when we are growing up, when you fight with a, an elderly boy and they beat you, where did you rush to? To your father. Daddy, that one, that boy has beaten me. And where the father is sitting, the moment he rises, the boys will scamper like no man's business. When God comes and rises and begins to come towards where the fight is taking place, the Bible tells me demons can come in one direction but they scatter in seven different directions. When God begins to fight, anything holding you captive, begin to scamper, begin to scatter. Let God fight for you. Let God fight for you.
let God fight for you. So that you can see the salvation of God. God set up the enemies. He led the children of Israel to go through the long route and the hardest route. So that he can see and deal with his enemies. Sometimes God allows you to go through, through sick, sickness, through pain, through difficult times. I want you to know, God is setting up your enemies. So that he can rise and show the enemy that it is me that is going to fight this fight. That it is me, the Lord. That no, no, this child belongs to me. It is me, the Lord, that will fight my, the battle. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. You shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. When God speaks, it is a done deal. When God speaks and sets up your enemy, brings you in a situation, I want you to know that the situation is not there to crush you. It is not there to kill you. No matter how prepared your enemy is to strike, that situation will not kill you. In the name of Jesus the son of the living God. There is that song in Pemba song. Shale nekela kutinaba no mweo naima kuruselu akwe Shale nekela kutinaba no bumi naima kuruselu akwe I want you to think about that. Another one has come up with a very powerful song. Na le kumfuafye ati wefyo wawa. The Egyptians had heard about this God. But where we are, they are no longer hearing about him. They are experiencing him. I pray in Jesus' name. May you come to a place as an individual, as a family, as a church, where are you experience God? Where are you see God at work? Where are you see God dealing with your enemies? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are with your situations, I want you to know those situations are melting in the presence of God. The issue you thought is an issue when God steps in. It is no longer an issue. It is no longer a matter. What matters is the God that you believe. The God that you trust. That's why when David comes to fight Goliath, everybody, when Goliath begins to insult, he draws back. The young man, David, remains standing alone. And he says, who are you? And circumcised Philistine. That can defy the armies of God. The young man came with a stone. When God is involved, a stone can kill your situation. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Every issue in the audience, begin to deal with it. Take it away, Lord. Take it away, Lord. I pray this morning. By the prayer and fasting, it is the grace of this prayer and fasting with answers and solutions. People that left problems at home, let them go and find answers and solutions. Give them grace and wisdom. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. My brother, come. I know I'm taking you away from the camera. Wonderful young man. There is nothing too hard for God. There is no situation too hard for God. You are just about to begin experiencing the grace and the favor of God. These people here will stand as a testimony that this is what God has spoken in this life. Young man, don't look down upon yourself. You have great potential. 
that will turn things around, that will turn your family around. Stand still. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. There is so grace upon your servant. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And as you take the Holy Communion, fulfillment must begin. Fulfillment must begin. Every one of you here, if you are thinking of not taking the Holy Communion, just set your heart. This is not an ordinary Holy Communion. This one is an extraordinary Holy Communion. It is a Holy Communion of victory. It is a Holy Communion of answers and solutions. It is a Holy Communion of peace. It is a Holy Communion, oh yes, of restoration. The Holy Communion of healing. I pray in the name of Jesus. May the Lord use these hands to release a blessing upon you. Wherever you go, Everybody will say, what kind of man is this? These are simple hands. These are simple hands. The Lord will use them. These are hands will heal people. These are hands of healing. These are hands when you greet somebody and they have issues in their lives. The moment you finish greeting them, that will be the end of their issues and problems. They may not even understand how it has happened. The Lord releases a special touch upon these hands. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your servants. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Uncle, come. Uncle, come. You cannot just be a supporter, supporting others, and you are not getting your part, the part of your blessing. The Lord is saying to you, you must equally get the part of your blessing. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. There is so touch, there is so touch, there is so touch, there is so touch. I pray in the name of Jesus. Anything limiting him and his family, today it is broken. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. No more limitations. No more limitations. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen and amen. Hallelujah. Worship team, please come. You understand me? When I'm given time, I stick to time. Amen. In fact, I've, I've stolen five minutes. Amen. Thank you. Worship team, please take. We will, as we all stand, we sing that song, the man of God has the bulletin number two. Our God has no rival. God has no equal. Death could not hold. Worship team, please come. As we prepare for the Holy Communion, I request our church to wait for the tithe and offering. Hallelujah. Wait for the tithe and offering. Thank you, church, for your sacrificial and faithful giving. Uh, may the Lord continue to bless you richly. So faithful, church. Let's pray as we prepare. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful word you spoken to us. We shall cross over. Thank you. Father, I pray as your people are preparing to give the tithe and offering, our cry, your God, this morning, may you return to them thousandfold. None of them lack, oh God. If anyone has nothing, today is a miracle in the name of Jesus. And every single coin will be used for the expansion of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As ushers, I'll pass by whatever God has given to you. Just drop, then close your eyes and worship that song. Then we will go into the Holy Communion. Hallelujah.
Ushers, please pass by the pulpit also, please. Ushers, please pass by the pulpit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is no rival, no equal with our God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Tell the Lord, thank you for enabling us to cross over. Hallelujah. Let's close your eyes, speak to him in preparation of the Holy Communion. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Past seven days, God has been with us. Our God allowed us to set apart to seven days and this morning before we break the fast as we are going to partake the Holy Communion. I just wanted to ask the Lord because of the time I'm not going to read the word of God again but this is not the house of prayer table. This is the God's table. Bible clearly says we must examine our lives. Apostle Paul in his letter to the first Corinthians chapter 11 concerning the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion he said some of us were sick and dead because we have taken the Holy Communion the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ in an unworthy manner but past seven days we have been praying to the Lord I cry once again before you if anything in me with my through my action through my imagination through my words through my sight anything I have committed against the Lord forgive me and cleanse me with the precious blood and make me worthy to partake hallelujah as the Lord to cleanse us we are not supposed to examine others I am supposed to examine my life 
Lift us the Lord, Lord, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me, Jesus. And also the Lord, this Holy Communion reminds the suffering, death, the real resurrection, ascension of Jesus Christ. And also it reminds the second coming of Jesus is imminent. We must be ready. Church past seven days. We have been praying and fasting. The primary purpose is to prepare us so in the trumpet blows. We shall be. Hallelujah. The reason why God left the church. He is making us as a perfect bride. These seven days we have been asking Lord, remove every doubt from us. Hallelujah. As before we are going to partake. I want us to fill our hearts and our minds. To be filled with the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved church. Because of Jesus death today. We are able to partake the covenant. New meals of new covenant. The blood and the body of Jesus Christ. From the garden of Gethsemane to the Golgotha, the suffering of the Lord Jesus went through. Thank you. As the Lord cleanse me. And even in the garden, where the Roman soldiers treated him, even his own chosen disciple he betrayed him the four by a form of kiss. Oh, he was flogged, church. Flesh from his body was shattered for our sin. They put a huge crown of thorn on his head and struck the huge thorns, pierced his head for our sin. They slapped him, they spat on his mouth, they hurled insult on him. It's all for our sin, my brother, church. He carried that heavy cross falling many times to the Golgotha for our sin. Huge nails went through his hands and feet for our sin. When he was thirsty, they given him to drink the bitter vinegar for our sin. He was pierced. The blood and water came out. Finally, he said, it is finished. Because of that finished, perfect, eternal sacrifice, this morning we can come and partake his body and blood. Tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, for cleansing me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we commit all of us and the bread and juice. Bless it and sanctify as we partake. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Please take your seat. For the sake of the visitors, if you're born again and you have a true confidence that I leave a right walk with the Lord, you are welcome to partake the Holy Communion. And if you are a visitor in your own church, you partake the Holy Communion, you are welcome. Since after the COVID, we have not changed the way of partaking the Holy Communion to avoid the crowd so as from this side from uh, pastor onward the people will come those who are coming please come when you come you show your hand we'll give you the bread you can pick a cup of juice and go and sit at your place don't partake you pray over you don't need to stand you can sit after serving everyone we will partake together may God bless you
Anyone has not received, would you please raise your hand? Bread or juice will come and serve you. Anyone? We missed out. You are not able to come. You are seated there. We can come and serve you. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread together. In the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink from the cup too. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the grace you've given us to pray and fast. Thank you, Lord, for your body and your blood. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us to be your precious children. So you have taken your body and blood. Give us, O oh God, grace to live a life that is pleasing and acceptable unto you. Give us the more grace to overcome every challenge. And bread and juice is remaining on this table. It is an indication. You are going to bring more people from various nationalities, tribes, color and language to house of prayer. So that we will be able to fellowship together, oh God. Prepare our hearts to receive. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please take your seat. We are done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As the ushers pick up the cup, I requested two ushers or three ushers from the building committee. Please, two or three quickly, building committee. So that uh, maybe you are a visitor. You may be wondering why pastor have already taken the tithe and offering. Why pastor again? This is a uh, another free will offering towards the construction of the sanctuary. We don't look at any of you. We don't ask. Our offering bags are passed. If God has given something towards the construction of the sanctuary just to drop it, then we have done. May God thank you, church, for your faithful and sacrificial giving. It is only through your support we have reached this far. May God bless you. I want all of us to stand. I also request uh, uh, Reverend Evans to come and join me before we know we want to make a few declaration to you in line with where the man of God has touched and finished today. Uh, the Lord says to us today through the servant of God, we are crossing over. We are crossing and one, I don't know how many of you picked it in your life when he was about to conclude he said, maybe 10 minutes before his last part of the message, he said something which is very, which I wanted to pray over you so that uh, I, when the man of God said, I was so excited how the Holy Spirit has connected. So we are going to declare that. That is where he cut, he touched their word. He said, God prepared a way for the people of Israel in the sea to cross. But... Egyptian made a mistake to step into the way where God made for his people. I hope you caught it that one. That is a word for house of prayer. That's why I called him. We are going to agree. What are the, when we declare it, I want you to agree it. Connecting to man of God has connected it. Everything concerning your spiritual life, concerning your children, concerning your ministry, concerning your job, concerning your business, concerning your health, concerning your marriage, God prepared a way for you. That is, it is for you. 
and if the devil or enemy is trying to pass through today is the last day they are going to see it and god open a door for you at the office and the enemy is trying to step in my brother don't fight the battle hallelujah because what god made for you who can step hallelujah why the man of god said because god is there Hallelujah. I want to close your eyes. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Hallelujah. Release it. As we as a servant of God, before we leave this sanctuary, we are going to declare to you, Father, we declare upon house of prayer, every parents, every brothers, every sisters, every children, every young people, every couple, every widows, every widowers, whatever area they are going through, they shall cross over. Father, any of them are going through challenges, attacks, pain, sickness, crime, as the man of God promised, spoken, devil has pushed them into a corner today they shall cross over in the name of jesus house of prayer you shall cross over your generation shall cross over you shall be blessed in the name of jesus you are going and coming is blessed in the name of jesus the works of your hands are blessed in the name of jesus you may be going through difficulties past a few years years and months you have been on tears you nobody know you are what you are going through today as the servants of god agreeing together we declare that season is over you shall cross over you shall cross over oh rakabaragas sickness you have been battling you are crossing over that season premature death you are crossing over oh, financial insecurity you shall cross over you shall cross over oh, no peace unity love in the family you shall cross over I release love unity upon the family there is no spiritual growth a spiritual dryness a spiritual stagnation today as a servant of God seventh day of prayer and fasting as we break the holy communion I declare spiritual of refreshing your family shall flourish spiritually they shall swim in the presence of Jesus Arakabaragas Rudabaragas Arakabaragas Aduja baraga da raude tira raga laga da ge shakale raude tira raja laga ne. Oh, there are people. There are four people. God is showing. You wanted to give up. You wanted to give up. Today, this morning, with the servants of God, we agree. Belawa, my brother, my sister, you are not going to give up. Oh. Light is coming. Lord, I pray. Hallelujah. Church, I want you to point your finger, pointing finger to your feet. Both feet. Declare it on the seventh day of prayer and fasting. I want you to repeat us this prayer, speaking to your feet today in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. On the seventh day of prayer and fasting, my feet are anointed to cross over every demonic strategies, every demonic agendas that has placed under my feet. Today I speak in the name of Jesus. Today I speak in the name of Jesus. My feet is anointed to cross over. As a servant of God, we release a new strength upon your feet. I pray new vision upon your eyes. We pray new strength upon your bones. I pray new doors to be opened today. Hallelujah. I pray new light to shine in your territory.
That is a new dawn is coming upon your family, upon your business. Are you frustrated? Because of happening around, stand still as the man of God say, you are crossing over. Beloved, God says, when the devil frustrates you, it is not the devil frustrating you. Devil is frustrating your God. Hallelujah. Who can frustrate your God? When you look at your generation, you are frustrated. Don't give up. Can I tell the Lord, I give my generation to you? Oh. Every form of demon, Father, as we break our prayer and fasting today, any form of counterattack, anything that you want to steal the joy and the blessing of your people, today as the servants of God, we paralyze it in the name of Jesus. We paralyze it in the name of Jesus. No sickness, no affliction, no sorrow, no death shall come to your territory. I declare it in the name of Jesus. May your people enjoy God's grace hallelujah adura baraja gada rauda bara gada rakabala gada ruda bara gada raude shakale raude dura raga ba 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 dura raja lagada raude dira raja lage achage raude we release angels to your territory today may you walk hallelujah ha beloved child of god as you reach home expect some supernatural visitations expect supernatural not not to bring you to excite you there is no use for us to excite you we want i don't want we don't want you to be surprised there are supernatural ex- visitation is taking place hallelujah some of you are carrying a special grace hallelujah even while you are standing you can feel in your body there is something is happening right now it is something unusual today i release it along with the servant of god we release There are two people here you left you as two family member because they want to come they are not feeling well right now they are healed in the name of Jesus right now they are healed in the name of Jesus someone who is here yesterday today you are trying to smile but you are not smiling because you had a very bitter conflict with someone and you don't know how to handle it but the lord says there's a supernatural visitation of restoration and peace if you are the one you receive it right now even you can feel in your body and the other person is other party is also experiencing the divine touch the matter is resolved in heaven father thank you for the sacrificial giving of your people tithe offering first fruit even towards the construction of the sanctuary as we go back take us home safely thank you lord be with us oh god now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forever amen and amen church we shall cross over enjoy jesus may the lord be with you may protect you bless you hallelujah thank you pastor Reverend Ivan Smashongo and the family for the powerful ministry. May God bless you as we enjoy the final song. See you all on Wednesday Miracle Night Service. A million times will never be enough to tell all you have done with everything with
have blessed me more than I dreamed of. You've been so good, more than I can explain. You have blessed me more than I dreamed of. You've been so good, more than I can explain. You have blessed me more than I dreamed of. So good, more than I can explain. You, you have blessed me more than I dreamed of. You've been so good, more than I can explain. You have, you have blessed me more than I dreamed of. You've been so good.